So in this process of raising one's vibration of thoughts, that then creates change. And change in our world is seen as chaos, is seen as disorder. And people think of this as negative. When in fact, chaos, which is defined as disorder, chaos is a natural part of our system. It's a naturally orderly and naturally disorderly system. We see evidence of this readily in nature. We see that when we look at the sky, the, the clouds are changing formations all the time, colors, t there's so much variety. That's an example of chaos. We see order in terms of gravity, in terms of photosynthesis. We can look at a stream and the stream goes down the mountain side and it follows order in terms of gravity, in terms of following the rules of gravity. But the placement of rocks in the stream is chaos, is disorder, it's random. We see this state of, you know, starting from zero growth, stagnation, decay, and coming back to zero, a constant state of that in nature. And when humans look at that in nature, they don't freak out. Unless that state, that natural interdependent connected, uh, chaotic, disorderly and orderly system impacts humans. When that system that's natural impacts humans, then humans start to freak out. And humans also start to freak out when the naturally orderly and naturally disorderly system already inherent in nature impacts humans in terms of their lives, in terms of their personal lives, their personal situations. So I am encouraging all of us to become addicted to chaos. Why? Because for one thing, as I've already said, it's a natural part of all creation. And why become addicted to it? Addicted to it is because uh, if order, if keeping order has us as a human being in a place of misery, in a place of suffering, in a place of disempowerment, if order has us stay in that kind of place, then let's get addicted to chaos, to disorder, to changing the order of that misery so that we can create something new with the disorder of chaos. Welcoming them both there is a divinely inspired song, Let It Be. Divinely inspired, you know, when I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. That is a divinely inspired song in terms of let it be. But when we look at times of trouble, the first step is understand that that trouble is not trouble, it is chaos. It is the unraveling of order in order to create something new. So we look at the chaos that's in our world. We look at the chaos in our lives and we 
choose to either A, respond to it, or B, react to it. So let's look at, in the world, there are lots of examples of chaos. You know, people are fleeing Venezuela right now, literally pushing suitcases down roads because there's nothing for them economically there. There are fires raging in California. Lives have been lost. Animals are without anyone to take care of them. There's a lot of chaos. And people are experiencing chaos in their lives personally. And uh, I am one of those people. That's why I've been thinking about this so much. And so when you like me, or in the midst of chaos, and I will tell you what chaos I'm in just so you understand where I'm coming from. Uh, I'm sitting right now beside my fridge. There's my fridge. <laughs> I'm in the corner where there's like a little space because um, the rest of my house is full of all the contents of my bedroom because I um, there's been a flooding situation in my home and tomorrow they're coming to rip down an interior wall and they'll they'll have to rip down an exterior wall and redo both walls and redo the floor in the bedroom and they wanted to do the re redo the floor in the entire home and so I'm in the state of chaos uh, this is this video I'm making this video in on November what date is it the 18th today and I have not uh, made income since uh, formal income, meaning a regular steady income, since the end of June 2018. Uh, everything in the last four and a half months, uh, including losing my, my business, uh, this chaos that I'm in right now, uh, losing my identity, uprooting, dis creating disorder, everything from the world standpoint would state that Tina, what is happening in your life? What are you doing? Like you are creating all of this chaos. Like, are you losing it? Like what is happening? And people are, could they, <laughs> they worry. They create, cons they have stress over this. And I I could go down that route, but that is not who I am anymore. I am addicted to chaos. I know that for the f past four and a half months and the past how many years, I have been working on raising the vibration of my thoughts. And when I do that, I create disorder. I undo the order of at which my life was in, in order to create something new. This flood situation or the lack of income, regular income, zero, not no income yet coming in, is a result of me raising the vibration of my thoughts to create something new. This flood is me. I created that this is a result of that and this bedroom and floor and walls situation will be better than it was before as a result of raising the vibration of my thoughts I'm creating a better home to live in a better quality because in fact the quality of the outside wall and the inside wall uh, required uh, a higher vibration I know I've known this for some some for some time and this is what's happening. So in the in term it looks like chaos and the lack of income looks like chaos it, because it is. However, I'm in the process of creating something new. It is required. Stay in my business that I used to do, which was fine, but I had reached a stagnation. I was no longer growing. And in fact, I had started a decaying process in that business. 
So when the business seemed to naturally fold over the course of last year, I, I saw the signs, I knew that it was coming, and I allowed it to be, let it be, because I knew that I was creating something new. And I did not look back. I took a deep breath, and I said, okay, let's do this. We are in a state of a blank canvas. What do we want to create now? That is the nature of looking at chaos. It is a state of disorder, undoing the order of things which cause stagnation and decay so that we can create something new. It is not a negative process. Neither is anything that you see as chaos in the world. Everything serves a purpose everything. The people who are losing their homes, who are losing their income, their lives, the all of that, that is chaos. That is disorder at work. But chaos is interconnected just as it is in nature. It is interconnected and interdependent with order. In fact, the study of chaos is the study of order in uh, biology. And that is no different in our lives as humans. So it is time for humans to understand that in order to move, in order to grow, in order to get out of the stagnation and decay, in order to grow, it is the, the, the process is you're at a zero point first, then you grow, then you stagnate, and then there's decay back down to zero point. This is the natural cycle. So when your house is burning down or in a state of complete construction like my house is, or when you're in a state of, I haven't earned income for four and a half months, like I am in a state right now of. Whatever the state is, you have some chaos of some kind. When you're in that state, you are in the state of disorder, which is coming down to zero point, to the blank canvas, to create something new. It is not a negative process. It is the mystery unfolding to become mastery. You know, uh, the example of an owl Owls live, they, they, they come to, they, we know of them from the dark. You know, they hang out in the dark. They come and they're what, sleeping during the day. But in the dark, in the mystery of the dark, the owl gains its wisdom. It is not when everything is easy and and you know, flow, when it, it's not when everything is running like the same, the same, that's what I want to say. When everything has been running the same, the same, the same for a long time, we are in a state of ease and, and it's easy and, but we are not growing in that state. My business was like that, my, pr my past business was like that for many, many, many years. In the last four and a half months, I am in a state of straight uphill growth because I am letting, I, I, I let go of the, the, I went back to a zero point. And now I'm in the state of what do I want to create? What do I want to put on my canvas? And in that state of darkness, of not knowing what will be put on the canvas, that is when the most wisdom happens just like the owl. The owl's in the mystery of the darkness. In fact, there's a quote here that uh, 
from the goddess Isis. Uh, when something new is born, it always happens in darkness. It is literally unknown territory. And people are afraid or view chaos as a negative because it is unknown territory. It feels like darkness to them. And I can understand that. But that is the human perspective. From a higher perspective, it is the natural order and disorder of all creation. Source Creator creates everything from that darkness, from that zero point. That 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 part where fr- it emanates from that mm, blank canvas state. <clears throat> so it is time to become addicted to chaos. It is time to look at it as a valuable, interdependent, interconnected part of the system of order. Order and disorder are intimately connected. One cannot operate without the other. And so, when looking at the thoughts, how do we deal with chaos? How we, because we know that when we raise the vibration of thoughts, elevating the vibration of our thoughts, we will create chaos, just as I have created in my life. We can also create low vibrating chaos. I can walk around saying, I am, I am, I feel terrible today. I feel sick. I'm a loser. Uh, I don't deserve anything good bad things always happen to me. I can walk around having those kinds of thoughts and I can create low vibrating chaos. I can also have thoughts of I am unlimited, I am freedom, I am joy, I am divine love, uh, and I can create high high vibrating chaos, high vibrating disorder. Both are chaos. But of course, the difference is in terms of high vibrating, high vibrating chaos versus low vibrating chaos. High vibrating chaos is is continuing up the spiral of creating more and more empowerment, of more and more freedom. And low vibrating chaos is creating more and more lack, scarcity suffering, misery. You see, they're both chaos, but low vibrating thoughts create low vibrating chaos that results in disempowerment, suffering. High vibrating thoughts create high vibrating chaos, which results in creating more self-empowerment and more freedom. The more chaos you create and in the more high vibrating chaos you create, the more freedom, the more power you have. So, understand that uh, you always have a choice in what to do here with your thoughts, in what to do with what's happening in your head. Because what you mind, as I said in that last video, um, in the beginning was the word and what are you creating with it, what you mind, what you think about matters. It appears as matter in this world. In reality, there is no matter, as Einstein said. Everything is energy. So, uh, because it, it appears as matter, it, even though it's energy, you, if you don't like it there, can can change how you mind it, think about it here. And when you are creating chaos in the world, look at it and embrace it, first of all, and then understand, is it a low 
vibrating chaos am I looking at it's low vibrating because you are suffering you are creating suffering in your perception and in the way that you mind it <clears throat> I mean one could look at my situation and say that it's low vibration it is suffering I look at it as an opportunity to create higher vibrating a higher vibrating home and a higher vibrating way or ways in which I earn income it is not suffering for me it is about how we mind it and choosing that making that decision is mindfulness it is becoming aware of how we either react react means to act again re means again so react is to ag act again and again in the same way thoughtlessness not putting mindfulness in to that situation of course Einstein said the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again without uh, to, to do the same thing over and over again and expect different results that's a reaction on the other hand I am choosing to take responsibility for what I see in my life to take responsibility is to respond response respond it's that same root to take responsibility is to respond to become mindful of how I want to respond to take responsibility for what is here what is here and the actions that I take this is chaos this is disorder however this is what I created and I am embracing it and then and I also don't call it I don't look at it in the way in taking responsibility for it I don't create suffering for myself in how I choose to mind it another important part of using of mastering our thoughts and in using uh, our minds in the way that we think to uh, become powerful to become empowered to become to create more freedom is using our imagination children of course have excellent imaginations before adults most of them kill that imagination in them when we look at the creation process uh, in nature especially in insects we look at the term I want to pull it up here for a second imago or imago I think I'm not sure of the pronunciation imago so the word imago I am a G O which of course connects to the word imagination imagine imago they're from the same Latin root in biology the imago or imago however it's pronounced is the last stage an insect attains during its metamorphosis so metamorphosis of change it's all about change and imago or imago is the last stage of change of metamorphosis the process and meta this 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 imago is a the um, insects process of growth and development it's also called the imaginal stage huh? imagination imaginal stage and it's during this stage this imago stage imago stage whatever in which the insect attains maturity why am I talking about this because in a state of chaos in a state of disorder when the everything is falling and that there everything's decaying and you're coming to that zero point which is where I was the zero point four and a half months ago and in that stage in the in the stage of growth uh, since right this 
it is required during this stage to to one to embrace the disorder and know that it's a natural part and two to then understand I'm in a state of imago of, of imago imagination of using my imagination to then create something new and using my imagination assists me in the growth and maturation process to mature myself I will I do not mature and grow during a state of stagnation of everything remaining the same humans want everything to remain the same that is a state of stagnation of not growing of not maturing just as with insects in that last stage before they emerge as whoever they are they are maturing they are growing and that imago imago stage imagination stage is the same with us in this state of chaos of disorder when we are faced with these times in the world whatever use this time to use your imagination if you don't like something out there in your life in the world then start to mind it differently here start to create chaos become addicted to chaos and then in that state of disorder when we take away the order of that which disempowers us creates suffering when we take away that which causes stagnation and stops growth when we take that and we intentionally create disorder when we intentionally become addicted to chaos then in that state of coming down to zero point where there's the blank canvas we then <clears throat> require our imaginations we require using our imagination to then visualize create however we want to do that the world the life that it, we would like to see instead you doing a business for however long I did that business now reinventing myself requiring imagination just like if I make a painting just like my mother made that painting behind me she started with a blank canvas and she used your her imagination to make that beautiful painting behind me same process so it is so important not to look at everything out there that is in a state of chaos and feel powerless to change it nothing could be further from the truth what is true is that we can use our imagination to create intentionally chaos to create something new what kind of life do you want to live what do you want in your life what kind of world do you want to live in mind it use your imagination to make it appear as matter out there we already know that one person who vibrates at the level of 1000 according to applied kinesiology and the muscle testing techniques of techniques of applied kinesiology we already know that one person like a Jesus a Krishna a Buddha we already know that that one person can impact the entirety of the world can imp can counterbalance the negativity 
of the world, one person vibrating at a high vibration of 1,000, of enlightenment, can counterbalance the negativity of the entire world. That's already been proven. So, if you don't like what you see out in the world, change how you mind it here. Change what you think about it. And in terms of chaos, when you see chaos in the world, change how you think about it. Because you can look at it in terms of a chance to create something new. A chance to use your imagination to end the stagnation and decay and come back to zero point and from that zero point create something new. Become addicted to chaos. This is an important, essential part of mastering the mental body. I hope that makes sense. So, thank you everyone for your attention. I am so honored to bring this to you as part of my Self Mastery series. If you've missed the other videos in the Self Mastery series, you can find them at my We Rise to Shine YouTube channel under the Self Mystery to Self Mastery playlist. And uh, if you like this video and it helps you, please feel free to share it with loved ones globally. Uh, also, to support me personally, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Every subscription uh, doesn't cost you a thing, but it over time adds up to a minimum of a thousand and not a thousand YouTubers can start to earn monetization opportunities. That's why they always ask for subscriptions. So if you have people that you follow on YouTube, please subscribe to their channels if you like them. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps them a lot. Uh, please let me know if you have any comments, questions. Um, I am always interested to th hear what people think and I'm here to assist you in any way that I can. To assist you in any way with creating shifts in your life and shifting your perception of chaos in your life. Uh, so that's it for today. I thank you all for your attention and again I encourage you to become so vigilant in getting to know yourself, in getting to know your thoughts and how you deal with things and see if you're creating suffering, see if you are creating suffering by the natural state of things in this world. And use your self-reflection in getting to know yourself to rise in love with you first so that you don't fall when loving others. We rise to, we rise to shine as the true light of love.